Chad Conan, Waco Tribune Herald. Um, Kim, South Carolina, South Carolina looks like the deepest team you have played in a little bit. They also have the experience of winning the national championship two years ago. How do those things factor in as you start to game plan for them? Well, we certainly see how many minutes kids play. That's one of the things you look at when scouting um, a team. Um, you know, each coach knows what they have to do. I don't play that many players. Uh, if I play that many players, we're way ahead or we're way behind. Um, but it's effective. They're very good. Um, they're not the same team that won the national championship two years ago, with the exception, of, I think, Cuevas Moore and Harrington. Um, so um, we're very much aware of it. So I don't, I can't tell you any more as to why they play that many players, but it works for them. Over on the left. Rick Henry, WIS TV, Columbia. Coach, you beat the Gamecocks by 25 back in December as you prepare for this rematch. Uh, how have they changed? Were you at that game? Uh, Don't answer it. I know you weren't. <laughs> I was looking for you. Um, right. I was on another assignment. I know, nice but it spot. couldn't have been more important than them. <laughs> I'm pulling for women's basketball, man. Um, we did play them, obviously. Uh, they're a different team now. We're a different team now. Some players that did not play much in that game are now huge factors for them. Uh, you know about their guard play and how quick they are and how many players that they play. They like to push it and get up and down the floor. Uh, the difference probably in that game and probably what you'll see tomorrow is they started out in a zone defense, um, assuming because of our bigs, they stayed in it, and we jumped on that really quick. Our guards hit a lot of perimeter shots, and then they got out of the zone. Uh, I don't anticipate that happening because how effective our guards were against them in December, but also our guards are pretty good. While we have Cox and Kalani inside, we're not too shabby at other positions either. Also on the left. Matt Dowell, Watch Fox out of Columbia. Coach, because that game was a few months ago and because they have changed so much, how much do you look at what happened that night? You don't. You don't. Um, you look at the most current games that you can, and that's what we look at is a lot of the SEC games uh, and how they defended Mississippi State with their big. Um, go to the most current stuff you can find and you don't, you flush that. We flushed that game after it was over because it was a, a good uh, matchup as far as uh, going on the road to see what we were made of and what our strengths and weaknesses were, but it, it was flushed quickly uh, because you have to prepare for the next opponent. Over here on the right, the fourth row. David Smoke, ESPN Central Texas. Kim, you've been to these regionals and the final fours and all the tournaments as a player, assistant, and head coach. Does it change at all for you over the years? A lot changes. More uh, television coverage, more media. Um, you never get tired of it. Uh, you, your competitive juices continue to uh, flow. And um, what you're most excited for as, as you grow older as a coach is you're excited for those young ladies in the locker room because it's exciting for those freshmen who've never been to the NCAA playoffs. It's exciting for um, uh, anybody on your staff that's never been. Uh, for me, it just keeps your juices flowing and, and you, uh, you're more experienced, obviously, but uh, um, we're going to have fun with it. Over here on the right on the sixth row. Hey, Coach, David Newton with ESPN.com. What do you take from the 2013 Sweet 16 loss? It was a similar situation as this one where you guys were heavily favored and came in, um, I think, on a long winning streak as well. I knew that you would ask me about that 2012 national championship, but you want to focus on the negative, right? All right. Are you talking about the Louisville um, loss? You can't compare South Carolina to Louisville. Uh, those teams are totally different, and um, I just think it was a, um, a game, looking back on it, that was incredibly physical, um, that um, we had not ever seen before, 
and we're pretty physical ourselves. Um, a lot of three-point shots taken and a lot of three-point shots made. And uh, we made a just a great effort to uh, get back in the game and had a shot there at the end and missed it. Um, but that's why it's called March Madness. There are no guarantees. Uh, because we played these guys in December guarantees us nothing. If you think we're walking around here with our chest poked out and our heads really big and licking our chops, you, you don't know a whole heck of a lot about me and my personality. We have a respectful fear of everybody we play. And that's the way I approach coaching. Uh, if we were playing a team that had not won a game all year, I'm going to do the same thing in that locker room, the same kind of scouting report, uh, because that's how you, I coach. I just have a respectful fear of the next opponent. Oh, you're on the right in the third row. Coach Greg Hadley of the State. You have experience in the Big 12 playing teams twice a year. I was just, when I was, or just wondering, if, do you notice a big difference between playing teams the first time and the second time? Is it much harder to win that second time? Sometimes it is. It depends on if you go on the road first or you're playing at home second. Um, I think that uh, I can't speak for other coaches, but I probably think they agree with me. Guys, when you're playing in conference, we know everything about each other. You can't even breathe. They know our calls. You have to change your calls from each time you play them. They know the strengths, the weaknesses, take this away. I believe the NCAA tournament is a breath of fresh air when you get out of the conference. I've always believed that because you're seeing, although we've played South Carolina, you're still seeing a new opponent. And um, I can't imagine when you get to the NCAA playoff that um, it's any harder than conference, um, particularly if you have good coaches and good teams in your conference that are just going to beat each other up and know everything about each other. Over in the left on the sixth row. Matt Dowell, Watch Fox. Coach, this Coliseum has such a rich basketball history. Just what is it like for you and your team to be here and playing at the Greensboro Coliseum? It is my first time to ever be in Greensboro. And certainly we keep up with the ACC, uh, both men and women, and um, uh, we appreciate that um, they have a home base. This is where they play every year. We don't have that in the Big 12. It alternates every few years to a different site. So that tells me that it's much appreciated by the fans and that there's great fan support. And uh, I'm excited to be here uh, because I know with my accent, somebody in North Carolina is going to be more Southern than me. Over here on the fourth row. And Cherry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider. Kim, I've heard other coaches talk about your team taking on your personality. Do you see that with Don, too, with this South Carolina team? I think not just Don, but I think your team, everybody's team, takes on their coach's personality. Um, that's just human nature. Um, and I would think, yes. Um, you know, I, Dawn, you know, I'm going to date myself here, but Dawn, you know, I go back to when she was at Virginia playing for Debbie Ryan, and I was an assistant at Louisiana Tech and trying to figure out how to guard her and Tammy Reese and, and, and those guards. And uh, Dawn coaches the way she played. I coach the way I played. And we both played for outstanding coaches. And um, um, I would think, yeah, her team should. She's, she's got a resume that's unbelievable. I, I'd want to emulate success. Over here in the second row, we have time for about one more question. Uh, Travis Lynn, Women's Hoop World. Coach, you've uh, obviously had the, had the pleasure of coaching a heck of a lot of great players and a lot of great bigs over the years. But this front line y'all have this year is just about the most formidable thing I've ever seen. How, do, how does they stack up in terms of your experience historically? Well, it's like comparing your children. You can't. You have to remember, I coached Griner, and with Griner were two, three, six threes, and six fours. And that team went 40-0. and 0. 
Um, so you don't compare them. I think that with Kalani at 6'7", and then you got Cox at 6'4", and then you bring in uh, two freshman posts at 6'2", and 6'3", that are, are really different ball players. They're, they're more athletic and run the floor, and uh, while Kalani and Cox, you think, are back to the basket post players, they're really not. They can face up and shoot it. Their size is just bigger. They work so well together because a lot of it is they pass to each other well. I tease them all the time. Our guards sometimes can't get the ball to our bigs when they're open, but get the ball in another post player's hands and she seems to be able to find her. Now, I don't know if that's the length to see over the defense or if that's those post players, post players taking care of each other. Uh, but they, they just work well together. They read each other well. Um, they're, they're friends. They like each other. Um, th those kids, um, they're special. But I, I can't compare them to others in the past because I have been blessed to, to really coach some, some great post play. We have time for one last question here in the second row. Coach, you're the number one overall seed, but not the favorite to win the tournament. Do you feel like you're being overlooked or underestimated a little bit still? Oh, no. Somebody had to get that number one overall seed. We'll take it. Okay. <laughs> Any more questions? Th uh, fourth row on the left. Kim, uh, Juicy said one of the things that you told her after that freshman year was your defense has to get better if you're going to play for me. How have you seen her improve on that, uh, that end of the floor? Well, she's probably not the only player I've told that to. Your freshman year is the most difficult year of your basketball career. It's the most difficult year of your life, whether you were an athlete or not. You're leaving home for the first time, most of them. Your comfort zone is gone. Um, they're all great players. Uh, they all have been dominant players in high school, and they've really only had to probably play one end of the floor throughout their career. When you get to this level and you want to play at the elite of the elite, uh, you got to play both ends of the floor. And the only way that they learn that, Jerry, is experience it. I'll go back to Juicy fouled out at Kansas State her freshman year, played nine minutes, and she fouled out. So that right there taught her more than anything I could tell her. She was embarrassed. She got ragged on for months. But the cute story with that is some of those that were ragging her fouled out their freshman year in less time than nine minutes. So it's lessons that they learn from each other. And it usually happens on the court, not from what I tell them. Rick Henry, WIS-TV, Columbia. This is for Kalani and Lauren. When you played USC in December, what things impressed you most about them? And even though you won uh, pretty easily, tell me why you expect to face a tougher challenge from them tomorrow. Kalani, if you'll go first. Um, even with the large margin of victory, they never gave up. Um, they were relentless. Even uh, late in the game, they hit some threes and tried to get the momentum going for themselves. Um, their transition defense, I mean, transition game period really like um, impressed me. So, Lauren, uh, everybody's playing their best basketball right now. It's uh, win in advance. If you lose, you go home. So uh, everybody's gonna give you your best shot, and it's gonna be a completely different game. Like Kalani said, their transition game is really good. They're really quick. So we're gonna have to get back on transition defense. Also on the left, in the the th fourth row. Jerry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider. Chloe, can you talk about facing their guards and what you expect to see from them? Um, like they said, their transition game is good. Um, they're quick. They're going to get out and run with us. Um, and they're going to be aggressive on the ball, on defense. So I just expect them to be physical, quick. Yeah. Additional questions for the student athletes, right here in the right in the third row. Greg Hadley State, this is for Chloe. Playing South Carolina as a member of LSU for uh, you know as many years as you did, and then coming here, how much has that team changed without Asia Wilson? Um, I think they're more dependent on their guards than they were with Asia. With Asia, I mean, she was a 
force to be reckoned with down there in the post. Um, but they're definitely more dependent on their guard play, I would say. Right here on the uh, second row on the left. Travis Lynn, Women's Hoops World. Um, you guys, obviously, the first matchup with South Carolina this year, um, and this is kind of for all of you, is, was pretty one-sided in your favor. But practice leading up to this one, how have you made adjustments tactically or kind of thought about, you know, what do we need to do different, if anything? How might they attack us differently, or how can we attack them differently versus the last time out? Chloe, do you want to start? Sure. Um, <laughs> right. Um, I think um, they started the game out in the zone, and I don't think that was really their, like, their go-to defense that they wanted to play. So I feel like they're going to play us in a man. Um, that's kind of what they're more used to. So I expect that. And then um, I just expect them to push it and get up, get up a lot of threes. Um, I, I think they're going to want to shoot a lot of threes and hopefully make them. So. Lauren? I think they're going to throw a lot of different lineups at us. Um, they had some players who are playing more minutes now that didn't play against us, like Cuevas Moore and um, their other post player, Her Harrigan? Kalani? Harrigan, yeah. Um, I think they're going to try and be more physical, especially with us in the paint. Um, but it's nothing we haven't seen before. And like I said, their transition game has definitely improved. So, We're on the left on the third row. Tyler Bolden, KWTX for Kalani. Uh, going deeper into the NCAA tournament, sometimes that senior leadership can, lead up, can mean a lot more to a, to a team. How much more responsibility are you placing on your shoulders as you can go even farther? Um, you know, uh, us three up here are pretty much the captains of the team. So, um, you know, we know we've been on this level before and just trying to get our young ones, showing them what to do in the right way. But, um, you know, I, we've had a few good practices leading up to this point, and I think everybody's focused, so they really made my job, and I think their job's a lot easier. In the second, second row or in the left? Obviously, like you said, the three of you are the captains and get a lot of attention. What player on your team do you think that people might be surprised by uh, in this round of the tournament? Who should people be on the lookout for that might not be the headliner? Kalani, you want to start? I would say Dee Dee Richards. A lot of people uh, don't give her recognition, but her defense is outstanding. And I think uh, she's overlooked a lot. Lauren? I agree with Kalani um, about Dee Dee and then Moon and Alyssa coming off the bench. Um, they kind of come in and just give us a spark. Moon can hit some outside shots. She plays really good defense. She's quick. And Alyssa can get inside, make some great moves, and get us some offensive rebounds. Chloe? Yeah, I agree with LC. All three of those girl, girls, Dee Dee, Moon, and um, uh, Nalissa. Nalissa comes in. She rebounds. Um, she's definitely... Um, come in big um, lately um, with a lot of rebounds, putbacks, and Dee Dee. She cuts the baskets well, and she defends with the defense for us really well. And Moon, she did a great job against South Carolina last time, so I expect it, the same out of her this time. Over in the middle, in the back, Jessica Harke, Baylor, Baylor Lariat. So Kalani, you've been here for four years. You've gone through these games more than anyone else. What do you think is different about your team this year and what can bring you all the way? Um, I think that we have a lot of depth. Um, we can throw any lineup out there and not miss a beat. Um, you know, this time last year, we didn't have that much depth. And, you know, at that point, we were pretty much exhausted. So um, everybody's focused. Everybody's looking for one goal. And I think that's... I can't say that the whole team, the entire team, like every single person was focused as we are now. So, Over here on the left on the third row. Kalani, more, more on that depth. You really haven't had to play the entire game all season long. Uh, I guess a two-part question. Are you prepared for that? And were there games in the past where you wanted to tell coach you wanted to stay in the games longer? 
Uh, I am prepared for that, I would say. Um, I've kept myself in shape, doing extra uh, for the games I got maybe like 10 to 12 minutes because there have been games like that. Um, but I stay in the game longer for what? Um, give the young ones a chance to learn. Over here on the left on the fourth row. Lauren, you guys are 33-1, and one, but y'all have at least been tested. Y'all have been pushed in several games. How much does that help at this time of the year that you've been in some of those tight games that you had to pull out? Uh, it's been good for us, um, especially for the young ones to kind of see that. Um, I mean, we, we've we played in some tough ones uh, the years before, but um, playing in those tough ones, especially close to the tournament, it will it just helps us pull through and um, have that experience for when we do have one of those games.